I'll just lift it myself. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody. I'll, I'll get this. You can just come in and train for free. A couple hundred thousand dollars worth of equipment. It's not a big deal. Yeah, I don't. I just, uh, you know, I'm fine by myself. It's not a big thing. I'm not roan me or anything. Just me and the weights. That's what it's always been about. <laughs> yep, yep. We'll do a three repper for the fans out right. there. One, two, three, up. <laughs> oh yeah, that, that got to most of the fans. <sighs> Thank you. Shut up, that was amazing. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Excuse me. It's, instead of flexing, I just like to uh, have you follow me over here this way. I'm gonna go on a walk. Huh. Looking for Fat Dan on here, I'm not seeing it. It's a shame. I think that's really all that needs to be said. Mark, you're known for having a big bench, benching more than you squat. I understand you got a new goal though, you want to hit a new raw goal. What's that? I'd like to do a 600 pound bench, 606 to be precise, just because 600 is kind of played out. So, <laughs> yeah, 606. Right. But, uh, look what happens to you. Like, I mean, I know I got these cuffs on, they're causing some compression, but. But the shakes? Well, there's that too, but like, just the swelling of like my hand. My hands obviously are fat and disgusting, like the rest of me, but. Like that little goiter that's popping out right there. It's yeah, not yeah. normally. Yeah, you see that. It's not normally like sitting there. It's just from wrapping the wrist real tight and just squeezing the bar really hard. What is your current best raw bench that you've done? Uh, uh, the most I've done in competition is a 556 bench. Okay. And uh, in training, I did a 560, and today I did 555 five, five times two. Yep. So that's a PR. About two or three weeks ago, I did 530 for three. 
I did 495 for four. So things are coming together and the strength is coming along really good. Um, and then I, today I did a little bit of overload work in the slanger. Yeah. The slanger just so happens to be right here, Patty. invented by this guy right here. Hey, that's, that's why I was in the ghetto, Woodland. Woodpile. Anthony. Who knew? <laughs> Mark Anthony. I know. Amazing. Where's J-Lo? I, yeah, you know, I don't know. She might be here. <laughs> what, uh, what weight class did you uh, do that at when you did 556? I weighed 485 pounds. You don't look a pound or four. <laughs> yeah, see? Yeah, I know. Not a pound I, or 400. I hold most of it in my face. Face. Yeah, I, well, you know. I got that from my mother. Okay. Thanks, Mom. Hey, I was going to see this video. Now she's going to be so pissed we're, at me. We're going to, well, we'll eliminate that part. <laughs> I was going to say that uh, uh, Mark... Now talk me through the actual lift, what was going on in your head, because I noticed warming up for the actual lift, right, you're listening to like loud, angry music, you know, like some metal, whatever, normal normal gym stuff, right, right. Uh, and things were going great, uh, you're smoking the weight, and then when you went for the PR, you totally changed pace. Changed and, music. Yeah, and you played Metallica's Nothing Else Matters, right. and then you played a cover that was like <laughs> a, a children's choir singing there, or something, something like, like that. that yeah. yeah, so that's... Creepy. Yeah, so that's a complete change of pace. So yeah. talk me through what was going on in your head. Why did you pick that song? I think that your workout ends up being a little bit like a, a little bit like a good uh, rock song. You know, like a lot of the best ones um, take something like Enter Sandman or something like that, or uh, even like a you know a rock or metal. A lot of the best songs they, they start out really. They always start out with a bang. They start out great, but they don't start out playing loud and hard and fast right away. I think your workout is similar. It it kind of goes through some stages, and right about in the middle, right about in the when you have the uh, meat and potatoes going on, that's when you want to really uh, you know hit it hard and, and get after it. So that's like the change of music, just a kind of a switch. Then also with music, you're always looking for like a certain stimulation. Right. And if you listen to the same types of songs all the time, it's hard to like re-get that you know stimulation. Sometimes you're driving down the street, and something. That's why the radio is kind of cool, old school radio. But just a song will hit that you haven't heard in a long time. Yeah. And you're like, holy shit, I totally forgot about that song. And it gives you a similar stimulation to when you've heard it years and years ago, or brings up some nostalgic, you know. Were you thinking shit. of anything in particular, Mark? Like that song in particular, where it's like talking about nothing else matters, and it's kind of like a dramatic, emotional song, or was it just? Uh, I've always liked that song a lot. Okay. I mean, I've always, I, I always liked Metallica a lot and stuff yeah. like that. But it's not really anything too much deeper than that. Okay. Um, but you know, I, I, um, I just. The music and the lifting, they kind of go hand in hand. I'm not like a music person. I don't play any instruments except for the skin flute. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but, you know, I just, uh, it's like hard rap or metal or something with a good beat, something to get me fired up and something to, you know, people always talk about pre-workout and all these different things they take. I like to crank up some music. Now, Mark, talk, talk me right through now how this uh, here fashion, right? You, you got, I see you got the bandana. Yes, yes, yes. I see <laughs> the you got the shirt. Yeah, so talk me through this. What was your inspiration today behind this outfit? <laughs> well, part of my inspiration for today was, was actually Silent Mike because he ordered me up these kicks right here. All right. These Simon. Reebok uh, Olympic lifting shoes. Those of you who have never bench pressed in Olympic lifting shoes, you should try it. It works really well. Having the elevated heel allows you to kind of have a little bit better contact with the ground because when you go to lay back on the bench press, a lot of us are tight through the through the abdomen and through through the ribs, and it's kind of hard. A lot of times we, we get like this and we get in this tight position. When you have the heel in contact with the floor, it's actually what you want, because when the heel's in contact with the floor, it brings everything up like that. Um, but basically, like when I'm going for those big lifts, uh, not really thinking of like, I mean, I'm thinking of being aggressive and thinking yeah. of being fast. I know that like if I do the lift the way I want to do it, then then I'll make it. So I need to, the main thing I try to focus on is just dropping the weight from the top, which is the hardest thing to do because it's fucking heavy. Yeah. It's a lot of weight and, you know, even sometimes, what I'm actually trying to do, it sounds weird, but I'm trying to actually kind of scare my my guy that's like lifting out to me because I, I want to bring the weight down so quick where he's like, oh shit, did he mess up? Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? But that's just me trying to get out in front of the weight. Uh, trying to me trying to get ahead of the weight you know I'm trying to drop the weight fast trying to be aggressive with it trying to get out in front of the weight um, and then I'm trying to you know bring the weight down and kind of pull the weight into me a little bit I let it sink on my body and there's a slight pause and then I drive into it with everything that I have from the bottom I also you know people ask me about my head yeah you'll be a lot of questions in the comments below about the head movement the head movement is kind of a thing that I've done for years now uh, where I'm, I'm picking my head up and I'm bringing my whole rib cage kind of towards towards the bar a little bit, which seems like counterintuitive because everyone always says you got to try to keep your chest up. I don't know. It ends up being a weird sort of thing, but I, I'm kind of uh, swinging off of this 
chunk of my body. I don't know if other people can do it all that well, but it's it's just something I've been doing for years. I don't normally even show people it because it's it's a little awkward. <laughs> but when I throw my head back, or when I when I I lift my head up and I pause the weight, as soon as I go to throw the weight, I'm actually driving my head into the bench. If you go back and watch that last rep of the 555 for two, I actually kind of press my head into the bench, and then the weight goes, it just ends up locking out. So just uh, something I kind of picked up along the way, different, many different people. And Mark, you've been lifting for a long time. You've done a long lot of stuff. Time. Long ass time. Almost 30 years. You've achieved a lot. You did a lot in gear lifting. What now, after almost 30 years, keeps you motivated going for this goal of 600 pounds? Like, why are you even still doing it? You can kind of just rest up, you know, collect that slinger money, <laughs> show right. it up. Well, what motivates you now to try and get 600 pounds? I'd like to go after a 606 bench. A 606. Um, 603 is an all time record in the 242 pound weight class. Um, there's some really strong dudes out there, so who knows how long uh, that'll last. But, you know, just for me to even get in a neighborhood, whether I actually make it or not, uh, having a goal and setting your sights on something is, is fun for me. It's challenging. And without a goal, you know, it's like, what, what else do you have going on, you know? Like, I have a lot of things going on with business and my family and things like that, but um, it's nice to have a goal and to have something to... To just uh, to just chase down, to hunt, to hunt down, and, and to try to go after with everything you got, and to see if you can do it, and to see if you can kind of prove others wrong who might think you might not do it, right, or or even show your fans that you can do it. Look at me, all the above. Mark, anything you want to say in closing? Then, so people now know uh, you're posting a little bit on Instagram, but you're kind of announcing now. Wrote a 606 on uh, the bench. Anything you want to say in closing, either about yourself, bench press. Not too much, man. That's pretty much it, man. Thanks for uh, having me on your YouTubers. Thanks for having me down. If you liked the video, make sure to like the Dan video. Check out Mark's channel. Link's going to be in the description. And we'll be seeing all you guys, my rascals, in that next video. Peace.